Hello everyone and welcome to the Peer Review Week 2021. The theme of this year's Peer Review Week, multifaceted role of identity in peer review, is very close to my heart and I think it's very relevant considering the current geopolitical scenario. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers of Peer Review Week 2021 for selecting such an important topic for this year. This is very relevant and, and current. While we discuss multifaceted role of identity in peer review, let us understand the basic concept of identity in peer review. The basic of identity in peer review is that science cannot discriminate people based on the ethnicity, gender, age, language, institution or geography. That means the outcome of peer review should not be affected or impacted by the ethnicity, gender, age, institution, language, geography of the reviewer, the, the, the author or even the editor. You must have also noticed uh, the recent editorial from JAMA and the subsequent proposed amendments in the AMA Manual of Style in reporting age, sex and, and, and ethnicity. All these are in connection with the importance of diversity and inclusion in the scholarly publishing domain. And you would have seen there are a lot of conscious efforts from all the different stakeholders in achieving this. But the question is, is there a peer review bias exist based on the identity of the reviewer, author or even the editor. So there are several research access to identify the perceived bias based on the identity of the peer reviewer. So I would like to decipher the identity in peer review from the perspective of all the three that take from the perspective of an author, reviewer and even an editor. So as we know there are four major, there are two major types of uh, peer reviews the open peer review and the blinded peer review and the blinded peer review can be further classified into single blinded, double blinded and even the triple blinded peer review. So my favorite among the four types of peer review is the open peer review. That's simply because the process is very transparent. We have the identity of both the peer reviewer and the author is completely revealed. At the same time, it needs a lot of courage to provide the honest feedback when the identity of the stakeholders are known. However, we also need to be cognizant of the fact that there can be issues of perceived bias. I hear this a lot from my global, global colleagues about similar bias based on the country, continent, institution, etc. So the question is, is there is evidence for reviewer bias? Publicly, if you search the literature, you may not find enough data on the reviewer bias. But there is enough data on how authors approach the review process based on the perceived bias. Again, uh, I'm putting that in inverted commas, perceived bias. A recent study by Nature Publishing, which was presented in, uh, in the 2017 uh, peer review conference in Chicago, analyzed around 128,000 submissions from 2015 to 2017, where in which the publishers provided the authors two options, single blinded peer review or double blinded peer review. So overall, more than 90% of the authors selected single blinded peer review. But what is interesting is a stratified analysis. The majority of authors from less prestigious institutions chose double blind peer review. What does it mean? Authors from less prestigious institutions prefer not to reveal their identity during the peer review process. The trust between the peer reviewer and the author is under question. And the authors have these perceptions may be from their own experience. The country of corresponding order also had an impact, though it was not statistically significant. Around 20 to 30 percent of authors from India and China preferred double blind, whereas only 7 percent of authors from, from the UK and the US preferred double blind peer review. These two findings actually show that majority of authors from specific category of countries or specific institutions do not want to reveal their identity to the reviewers and so they prefer double blind peer review. But is that double blind is actually blind in practical? The double blinded peer review is not always blind and there are chances of accidental unblinding during the peer review. I know most of you are aware of this. Uh, in a double blind or a single blind peer review model, the author identity may be revealed in multiple scenarios. So a peer review expert in the field can easily identify the author by the uniqueness of the study, the topic, or the subject, or the writing style itself. Also the citations, the references, 
uh, of the manuscript also may give a clue to the reviewer about who the author could be, could be. And the statement on ethical clearances, the institutions uh, which are mentioned in the methodology may also lead the reviewer to the originality, the, to the original author of the paper. Also the acknowledgement, funding sources, though may, they may be redacted or blinded, may also give some kind of hint to the, to the peer reviewer. So what is important? It's not possible to always perform 100% blinding for peer review. So what is important? The scholarly community should ensure that identity of author, editor, or the reviewer have no impact on the outcome of peer review. We also need to emphasize and accept the fact that scholarly community is diverse, and we need to build the trust in stakeholders by practicing inclusiveness. Quality of research and publication should be judged by merit of the work and not by the, the, the identity of the authors. And always remember one mantra, as I have mentioned in the beginning of this talk, science cannot discriminate. Thank you all. And till we meet next time, it's bye from me. Thank you.